If you are regularly creating designs that include words, that means you are using typography. You might not be aware of it, but you are. So how do you choose your fonts? Do you actually know what you're doing or you just pick some because they kind of look cool? Well, if that's you, keep watching this tutorial. I will teach you 10 tips that will help you choose the right font. Hey, do you want to learn how to use Canva like a pro? Well, I can certainly help you with that and teach you all of my secrets. I have put together a five hour master course about Canva that will take you from zero to Picasso in only one day. If you like that idea, make sure you click on the first link in the description below to get your discounted coupon. So my first tip for you guys is to limit yourself to two or maybe three different fonts per design. And this is very important because if you go over uh, three fonts, then your design will start to look, it's, it will start to lose some of its harmony, uh, meaning that you, you will have kind of a messy design going all over the place and this is not something you would like to aim for. Uh, you, what you want is a very harmonious design with a limited amount of fonts that will uh, ensure consistency across the whole visual, right? So let me demonstrate that to you. I'm here in the in Canva templates library. So if I search, for example, for typography like this, uh, I just want to find a few different designs and count the number of fonts that they are using. So I'm just going, going to open a few designs and just we will just count how many fonts they are using, right? To see if our rule really applies here. So this is one. Uh, one design so we see that there's a big fantasy font here and then enter here and then another one so that's three different kind of fonts this one one two three different kind of fonts one two three fonts again this one has only two fonts but very minimalistic not much text going on and this one one and two so the first point I'm trying to make seems like it's kind of relevant because um, indeed I couldn't find a design in Canvas template library which has been created by qualified designers that uses more than three different fonts. So that's my first tip for you guys. Limit yourself to maximum, maximum, maximum three fonts per design. My second tip for you guys is to create a clear hierarchy in your design using your fonts. So there are different ways of doing this, but what you basically need to achieve is that by simply having a glance at your design, people will automatically be attracted to the main message, right? So in order to do this, in order to push people to focus exactly where you want them to focus, you can use different techniques with fonts. The first one is the most obvious one. You will just use the size of your font to to make one much bigger than the other one. And that's where, and that's what people will read first. Like in this design, for example, the hello is much bigger than from Brooklyn. And then uh, people will read hello first. Same here, the yard and then lifestyle shop. So the hierarchy is basically achieved with the font size. Another way of uh, achieving this hierarchy is by using a particular font like this one, my guide. Uh, it has a very fantasy font, decorative font, so it kind of attracts your attention because it's different. So you will tend to read this first, and of course it is bigger than the rest of the text, but even if we had like similar sizes, having a very different font, an unusual font, kind of establishes this hierarchy as well. Another way to establish hierarchy is to play with um, transparency. So you see this congrats here it's more transparent than the rest of the text and also it, ha it has been placed in the background so in, um, a uh, in, a, in a layer of your design which is more in the background so by playing with these dimensions and with the transparency you also establish this hierarchy with your fonts and then last but not least you can establish hierarchy uh, by using space and using shapes to create space for example, in this design, the before you is positioned at the center of the design, but also it's in a round shape and the, the white round shape creates some space around my word. And so it kind of attracts my eyes and this before you, I would tend to read this even before the think and speak. So these are simple techniques to establish hierarchy 
The most obvious one is to play with the size, then you can play with the font, si the font uh, style, um, use a fantasy font, then you can play with the layer, the dimension, and the transparency, and then finally you can use space and negative space to, to give attention to a piece of your message. The third tip I have for you guys is to use fonts that have style variants. So what are style variants? Style variants are very simple. It's the ability that you might have uh, with a font, with a specific font, to use the bold or italic version of that font. So let me show you how this works. Let, this is one design using as the main title the font Anton that doesn't have any style variants because you can see here the bold or italic versions are not available. So what I will do is choose a font that does have uh, these variants, like for example, I know that uh, Libre, Libre Bescoville have this, um, these variants. So let me show you how this works. Cooking lessons. So you can have this bold or you can have it italic. You see how you can basically change your design. So if we use this one as well, the same font, and then we can make it bold. And then this is a design with only one font, but has some variety thanks to these style variants. So you can try this with different fonts. And another thing that I have noticed in Canva is that some fonts are actually font families, like this one, Abaya Libre Regular, Abaya Libre Extra Bold, Abaya Libre Semi Bold. Uh, this goes on also for the Advent uh, font family, Advent Pro Thin, Pro Light, Pro Medium, Pro Bold, etc. So if you, if you play around with different, uh, different versions, different variants of the same font, your design will remain homogeneous, but still uh, kind of diversified. Tip number four, try to use words that are similar length or width. So this way you will create some kind of harmony in your design and um, let me show you how this works. So if I was to recreate this uh, design, but give it a special twist, let's, uh, let's say, all right, I want to have something like this. I will center this. And you see here this title, I'm gonna break this into two. So I'm gonna copy this. Right, now I have twice this text, I will delete lessons in this first box and in the second box I will delete cooking all right so now I do have both of my words into separate boxes text boxes so what I need to do and I can delete this one okay uh, what I want to show you is let's change the font for something bolder, let's say Anton. Okay, and same here, Anton. Okay, you can see that these two words are of similar length. I think they have the same number of letters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So because of this, they align perfectly, right? And I can, it allows me to play with the symmetry of these words. So let me adjust the uh, text boxes here so I can easily play around with them. There, and I want to show you something. There. That I want to actually create with this design. Using this um, this technique. If the two words were not of the similar length, then I would not be able to create something like this in my design. Um, now, I'm not saying this is the perfect design, I'm just doing this on the fly right now, but um, what I can see is that I can use these words because they are of si similar length. Uh, it, it doesn't look bad in this design. So let me group this, center this, and now we have this visual here and it's been uh, easy I would say to balance the visual because each of these two words are of similar length so if it was not the case the the design will be completely off balance let me show you so I will ungroup this 
And if I had, let's say, cook, and not cooking, you will see how the design is losing its balance. So try to use words of similar length or width. My next tip is about creating enough contrast between your background and your text and your font so that it's very legible. It's really easy to read. So uh, let me show you uh, with an example. So I have here a background. It's just an image inside a frame of this blue sky. So we have the blue sky, but we also have the cloud, right? We have kind of a light, dark photo here with both of these um, colors. So it's not so easy to put a text over this photo. Let me show you if I use the, the text. So in order to make your text box appear, something I didn't tell you before, you can, use, you can just use the shortcut T. If you press T, it will open a text box. So let's uh, write over the clouds. Okay, let's make this way bigger. Let's say 80, use another font, which is bolder, like this one, for example. Let's make this a little bit more aesthetic. Okay, this is fine. Let me adjust this because I moved it, yes. And this one in the, in the center of our image. Okay, so if we, if we consider this text like this, it's not very aesthetic because black on blue is not great. Uh, so what can we do to improve this? But we want to try to increase the contrast between the background and uh, the text. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. We could use some, some um, shapes to put right behind our text, do something like this. And maybe it looks good, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I cannot say at this point, but let's see. We use a white rectangle and we push it back. All right, so this is not wonderful, I would say. Uh, in terms of design, this is not very subtle. Uh, so another way of doing this would be like this. Instead of placing your shape behind your text, you can place your shape over your your whole background right and maybe um, give it transparency like this or we could even inverse these colors so let me show you uh, we will change this text to white like this and we will change this shape to a darker color give it more transparency to something like this and now we have uh, a higher contrast between my background and my font, my, my text. Tip number six is about finding the right place in your design to place your text over. Meaning um, when, when you are thinking about positioning text over a photo, an image, you have to be very careful and you have to really think strategically to where are you going to place that text. You want your text to be completely detached from the background, not having interference from the background or whatever image or visual is going on in the background with your text. So I have here a couple of examples and we will uh, decide where is the best place to put your text in these images. So this one, uh, I would say, let me create a text block like this and we will write only one message, which is summer. Uh, we want this to be bigger, of course, I would say 80. Yes, that's fine. And we will just use a different color. All right. So if we were to position this word on this visual, I think the best way to do it would be to find a place about right here, center it. Uh, I could center it with the page. It would be like this, but then it kind of looks uncentered because the hat is not exactly at the center. So I would just center it over the hat and center with this element of my design. If we take this visual, we would of course position our text here because we have a nice empty space here. So we can do, we can just copy this and bring it to our visual right here. Which, where did it go? It's okay, I just create another text box, make this bigger. 80, let's say subscribe. Subscribe. All right, make this bold. Make this bigger. 
Okay, so if we had to position this text over the visual, uh, we would probably not make it that big. So let's try 60, 56, and now we have, we could play with the line here, you know, the natural line of the wood to, to use it as an underlining this word. So you see, you have to kind of play around with what you have in the background of your image to find the most appropriate spot. The last three tips I have for you guys are going to be suggestion of different pairs that you can imagine. Okay, so the first one is to combine, to pair a regular font with a bold font. So let's use this design right here. I have two different things going on here. I have two blocks of text, separate. Uh, each word is separated in a different um, block of text. So I'm going to use a font which has the bold variant, right? So railway is good for this. So I have, yeah, I have hello here and then world here. And I will just use the bold variant to, um, to make my world word uh, bolder. So that's one of the variants. Next tip, we could combine a bold font with a script font. So let me show you with the same example. We have hello here and world here, but instead of this being normal, I will just use bold and world, I will use a script font. So let me find an interesting script font. Maybe we need something legible. The problem with script font is that many of them are not very legible. So let's see if we can find something that looks handwritten, but still very legible. Maybe the brusher. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, this is not so bad. So this would be, and we can even make this bigger to give more fantasy into this design. And if we want, we can change the color to make this even more interesting like this. Okay, next tip is to use a tall font with a short font. So let me show you by duplicating this design one more time. So I'll use a, sh a long form, like kind of a long letters, like six caps, for example. Hello, yeah, let's make this bigger. And this second word, we can use something small. So let me find a small, maybe a Leo. Let's see how small this is. But you got the idea is to contrast, which this is big. Let's make this smaller. Yes, and if we drop the capital letter, it will look even smaller. And we can go smaller. Yes, this is quite nice. All right, now I have found the contrast with a tall and a short font. And the last tip I have for you guys today is the last kind of combination of different weight of font uh, is to be using a thin font with a thick font. So let me show you again, and that would be our last example for today. Uh, we will be using a fat font like Anton, for example. Anton, which is very thick and a thin font like maybe Montserrat hairline. Everything airline really is uh, really f thin or maybe Josephine or Julius Sands, let's say. Like, let's use this one. What's the 88? Uh, I want to use the same, the same font size 88 to show you All right, that's way too big. So let's adjust mm -hmm. like this. I think that will do it. Yep. All right. So that's the, that's the last trick to use a fat font or a thick font with a thin font. And that's it for me for today, guys. These were my 10 tips to help you find the right fonts for your visuals. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something interesting today. Uh, you were requesting this video in the group, so there it is. This is my gift to you. All right, I just say goodbye for now. See you in the group or see you in the next video.
Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the little bell right there so you will have a notification every time I upload a new video. And that's it for me today, guys. I wish you a very creative day.